We go to Psalms 78 verse 35. The psalmist tells us about the people of Israel. He said they remembered that God was their rock. The most high God, their redeemer. And then in verse 36 he says, But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast towards him. And they were not faithful to his covenant. Verse 38, Psalm 78. Yet he, being compassionate, atoned for their iniquity and did not destroy them. He restrained his anger often and did not stir up his wrath. Verse 39, he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and comes not again. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. They tested God again and again and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember, verse 42, his power or the day when he redeemed them from the fall. When he performed his signs in Egypt and his marvels in the field of Zon, my soul waits for the Lord. Isn't it amazing? We see the picture of God rescuing his people from the land of Egypt. The miracles he did there. To the point that he brought the Egyptians to their knee to acknowledge he was God. And all the gods of Egypt failed. He did it for his people. And yet, in the stubbornness of their heart, they kept the turning their face away from him. Can I just plead with you that this Christmas you would see the face of God? Because he came as our Redeemer, that little baby in Bethlehem. In Isaiah 49, 26, it is, the word is given to us, I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood as with wine. Then all flesh shall know that I am the Lord your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Praise God. That little babe is our Redeemer. And his program is just not for one week, one month, one year, for 10 years, for 20 years. He doesn't occupy the most powerful seat in the United States of America for four years and then seek election. He is God, he is redeemer, he is established and he alone can establish us for eternity. Then all flesh shall know that I am the Lord your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. So we see the power of our God as Redeemer. Can you see the face of God this Christmas? He came as our Redeemer. But you know, to be able to come as a Redeemer, He has to have power above all powers on, on the earth and in the universe. Remember, Jesus will say in Matthew 28, All power has been given to me in heaven and on earth before he commissions the disciples to go. So we know he has all power because all the other powers, whether it's the land of Babylon, whether it is Rome, whether it was Britain, all have come to nothing. But his power will reign from shore to shore for all eternity. The power of our God is Redeemer. Secondly, the price paid by God, our Redeemer. You see, there's something very subtle that God will come as a little babe born in a stable which is basically a cave surrounded by animals. The world he created, there was no mansion set for him. There was no palace lined up for him. And he did not come in his, or his regalia. Because if he did, no man could stand. He came as a little babe. 
but there's a price to pay. The price paid by uh, uh, God, our Redeemer. What was the price he had to pay? First he had to shed his glory. Because he couldn't come with his glory. And the pomp and the majesty. Because we could not stand. Remember at Mount Sinai. When the children of Israel has been redeemed from the Egyptian. The first place they come is Mount Sinai. And God was going to meet with them there. Remember all the thunder and the lightning and the people were so afraid and yet they did not see the face of God. They just knew his presence was on the Mount Sinai. Imagine when God shows his face. Ask Isaiah. In Isaiah 6 he said, I saw the Lord. See what happened to Isaiah. Look at John when he's taken up to heaven. He says, I fell one as dead at his feet. We cannot stand in the face of Almighty Holy God. So he comes in a package of a little baby. Who does the baby frighten? Who gets intimidated by a baby? The price paid by God, our Redeemer. He left his glory and clothed himself in a body of human flesh and came as a baby. But I want you to see something very interesting in Isaiah 53. The price that was paid by God our Redeemer is talking about Jesus Christ. A verse many of the Jews don't like to read. They want nothing to do with Isaiah 53 because it takes them right in the face of Jesus Christ. Listen to how Isaiah will write. Isaiah 53 10. Sorry for picking the text in the middle uh, you can always do a number on God's word when you take it out of context I want to stay within the context but I can only use so many verses so just to bring it to you in verse 10 Isaiah 53 10 yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him he has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt he shall see his offspring he shall prolong his days the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. In verse 12, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because the Lord, because he has poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for transgressors. This was the price that was paid by Jesus Christ that little sweet baby born in Bethlehem. The price paid by God, our Redeemer. Can I again just humbly ask you, let this Christmas be a time when you will see the face of our God. The power of our God is Redeemer. The price paid by God, our Redeemer. In Titus chapter 2, written, see what Paul writes. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. Training us to un renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of uh, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. This is the price that was paid by God our Redeemer. He literally gave his son in our place to break the bondage of sin to, to, to remove that which we could not do for ourselves we had become Satan's captive and to destroy the power of sin to break these chains around us he came and chained himself and took our sin upon himself. That was the price paid by God, our Redeemer. Yes, that little babe of Bethlehem. 
Thirdly, the purchase by God, our Redeemer. We begin with the power of our God as Redeemer. We look at the price paid by God, our Redeemer. Now we look at the purchase by God, our Redeemer. You know why I emphasize the word Redeemer? Because a Redeemer comes in the middle of chaos. But that Redeemer must have power and resource to be able to lift those who are suffering, who are hurting. People, physical suffering is one thing. But I'll tell you, the spiritual bondage has got everlasting connotation. And he came to purchase us, to free us from the bondage. And to purchase anything, there's a price. We just saw the price paid by God, our Redeemer. So why did I talk about the price and now talk about the purchase by God our Redeemer? Again, we turn to the gospel, uh, the, the book of Isaiah, which is full of the gospel messages. In Isaiah 41, 13, listen, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I am the one who helps you. Verse 14, Isaiah 41. Fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. What amazing words. God gave his promise that he's the one who will purchase not only Jacob, the men of Israel, but down history, he will purchase whom he will call his bride, his church, which includes you and me. Isaiah 43 verse 1, But now says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. He literally purchased us. What was the payment? That little babe of Bethlehem. Jesus Christ. God came as our Redeemer. Will you let this Christmas season be a time when you will see the face of God? And you will see him as your Redeemer. Because he alone has the power to redeem my soul from hell for all eternity. Only he has the power to redeem your soul from hell for eternity. He who redeems Israel has stepped up to redeem us. The price, what will it cost you? What will it cost me? Well, I'll tell you, don't even talk about the price tag. The price tag was paid by God. The price paid by God, our Redeemer, through his son, Jesus Christ. And now we look at the purchase by God, our Redeemer. That's why Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, Romans 5, Through him we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 6, While we... For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. That little babe of Bethlehem. Verse 7, Paul goes and says, For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one may dare even to die. Verse 8, But God shows his love in us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 